So, uh, so now the topic is, okay, systems of linear equation by graphing. Let's use that one. Okay, so now, um, just so let's use the, the, uh, the first equation that we used yesterday, let's use that as an example. The objective hasn't changed. The objective is still we are trying to provide solution to systems of equation using substitution or elevation. We are using graphical method. And the reason why we have to do it is because there are many applications in real life that ultimately involves uh, systems of linear equation. So now, can somebody help us recall the first equation that we used yesterday? So let's use that to make our illustration. What was it? Look at your notes. I can say it was able. Yes, what is that, please? Okay, the very first one we had was x equals negative 2y minus 5. X equal to negative 2y minus 5. Yeah, and then the second one was 3x minus y equals 5. 3x minus y equal to 5. Okay. So th this wasn't really the, the first one, but we can use we can use this. All right. So the question is solve the system of linear equation by graphing. Solve the equation. Is it ing? Is that correct? Which one is correct? Is it with y or just ing? Okay. So now, uh, in order for us to do this, there is something we have to do to enable us to do it, uh, to enable us to solve this. Normally, you should label your equation, um, equation one and equation two. All right. So usually, you will say your solution like we usually do. So you have to, you have to adjust your equation. Once you want to solve with graphing, you have to adjust your equation to look like this, to look like equation of uh, the general equation of uh, a linear function, which is um, y equal to mx plus b. So you need to re rearrange your equation to look like this. All right. So in order for us to do that. So considering equation one, you see this is where rewriting, rewriting of um, expression, this is where uh, it is useful. Remember when we did rewriting of expression? So now considering equation one, we are considering that just working on equation one to generate another format of considering equation one. So it, we can move, we can move, um, y uh, two y to the left side we can move two y to the left side so that equation one is generally x equal to y minus five so we do trans uh, is it transposition uh move two y to the left side and because it's negative it's going to turn to positive okay so um you have x plus two y equal to five then you move x to the right side. That becomes two um, two y two y equal to negative x plus five. When you move something to the other side of the equation, you just change the sign. Then now we are trying to solve for y. We are trying to solve for y. Or you say you are rewriting the expression to make y the subject of the formula. So in that case, we are going to divide every term by two. So divide two uh, y by two, then negative x by two, and five by two. So that cross two divided by two is two. Uh, it's one rather. So we have y here, and then one divided by two is uh, one over two. I mean, if you like, you can write it 0 0.5, but I like to write in fraction, negative one over two and uh, X plus five over two. All right. So now if you now compare this, if you compare this expression right now and this general equation, you will discover that M is the slope which is negative one over, over two, and uh, B is the y-intercept. B is the y-intercept, which is five over two. 
and you will repeat the same process. You will repeat the same process with the second equation. Repeat the process for second equation, what we just did. So I'm gonna give you uh, one minute to do that. So we are ready the, the second equation to look like the general equation of a linear function. You got one minute. It should be 30 seconds, but take one minute. Just make sure you get it right. Okay, so what's the solution? Uh, what is y, uh, considering equation two? y equals three x minus five. Okay, correct, that's correct. So this one is actually a little easier because you can just move y to the right side and move x to the left side, okay? So that's correct. So considering equation two, you have that. Um, it's okay, we have a question. Yes. Would y be negative? Um, you want to make it positive. You want to make y uh, to look like this. You want to make the expression to look like this. But y is already on the left side. Well, um, okay, uh, I understand that. But okay, let me let me do it uh, the way you want so that you can see that the negative uh, can should disappear. All right. So now uh, Rankin is saying, see, because the y is already on the left side, that you should just transfer the three x to the right side. And I agree, but let's let's do it and see. So considering the um, second um, equation, so we are, we are having that three x minus y is equal to five. So um, if you move three x to the right side, you are going to get negative y equal to um, negative three x plus five. All right, okay. So now you want to eliminate, you want to eliminate the negative. So you, you eliminate the negative by dividing through by negative or multiplying through by negative, whichever way you want. So if you say multiply by negative, negative one, basically, you're multiplying everything by negative one. So that's going to change negative times negative is positive. So it changes y to positive and it is going to change the three X to now positive, positive three X, and then it will change the plus five to negative five. So negative five, that's how, that's how um, it is positive. So now we have two equations. So uh, this one is the second equation. In that case, M is equal to three and uh, B is equal to negative five. All right, so now our, our um, two equations that we need to work with are now ready, which is this one that I'm asterisking and this one. Okay, so now what do we do with it? This is what we are going to use. We are going to use them in plotting the graph. We are going to use them in plotting the graph. So, um, so we, we can do two things. We can create a table, put in the numbers, and plot the real graph, or we can sketch it. We can sketch it. Okay, so now when I mean creating a table and plotting the real graph means we can create something like this. We can create, uh, we can create something like this, you know, a table of this nature. These are options, I'm just giving you options. And then we are going to just do one, one of the options. So we can create a table that looks like this, where we have X, uh, you can start with zero if you want to, zero or even negative numbers. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have y equal to negative one over two, x uh, plus five over, over two. Then we substitute each value and get the corresponding value for y. We can do that. And if we are doing it like this, we have to do it for both of them. So the second one would be, uh, the second one would be, uh, I'll just draw the same thing. I'll just draw the same table, but different equation, okay? You can even start with negative value. It doesn't really matter the two both of them. You can even start with negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. And of course, this is your X values and this is your corresponding Y values equal to three X minus five. Okay, 
So I am going to I'm going to leave this thing as part of something you are going to do later on. But let let me show you the the fastest way of doing of um, plotting the graph. All right. Any questions so far before I move on? Okay. No question. So now, if you want to sketch a graph, if you want to sketch a linear graph, the two things you must consider are the y-intercept and the slope. All right, so let's let's sketch the first graph. Let's sketch the graph. You are going to draw the two graphs in one in one coordinate system. So this is our coordinate system. This is our coordinate system. You, you should draw a better line than, than me. So this is usually your one, two, three, four, or any other any other scale that you're using. Or any other scale that you're using. This is usually your origin. So let's just say we're using one one. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And um, now look at, let's consider the first one. The first one tells us that the y-intercept is five over two. Five over two should be something like uh, 2.5. So, which means we can call this as um, one, two, three, four, five. So 2.5 is somewhere here. 2.5 is somewhere here. So this is where your y-intercept is. Okay, now look at the slope again. Look at the slope. The slope says negative one over two. So remember that uh, slope is, define slope for me quickly, somebody, please. Rise over run. Rise over run, okay. That's the, um, the most basic definition we can get. Rise over run, and that's what we are going to use. Now, you, you see the slope is negative one. The top one is the rise, uh, the bottom one is the run. So since it is negative, that means instead of going up, it is going down. So. Uh, you just count from this your y intercept. This your y intercept point. You just count negative one. So negative one down. You know, you go down. So you see from here, I hope everybody can see where I'm pointing at right now. From here to here is 0.5. Then this is your another your another point five here. So your your this is your y intercept here, which is your b. So now the run says run says two. So you, you just move two, uh, which is one, two. So you go this way right here. So the next thing you do is you join the line between the y-intercept and this point. You just join the line. You just join the line. You see? So that becomes, this line becomes your line for, um, y equal to negative one over two x plus five over two. Now you repeat the process. You repeat the same process. So now the second one says that the y intercept is negative five. Okay, it says negative five. So where is our negative five? I need to adjust my distance so that it can look a little bit straight. Okay, so uh, let's go down. Okay, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. So y intercept is negative five. So here is your negative five right here, right here. And um, your rise, your slope is three over one. Slope m is three over one. So your rise is three. So instead of going down, now you go up. So when you go up three units, so that should be from here, one, two, three. And then your run is one, your run is one. So you come this place right here. And then you join your line, you join your line, these two lines, you just join it. So this line becomes your y equal to three x minus five. Now, here's the interesting part. The interesting part is the point, the point where the two lines intersect is the solution. The point where the two lines intersect is the solution. You got it? So point of intersection, point of uh, intersection 
All right. So if you look at this, if you look at this, this point of interse intersection is going to correspond to a number here and it's going to correspond to a number here. Whatever that number is, the coordinate, that's the solution. If the line does not intersect at any point, then that means the linear equation does not have solution. What did I just say, please? Somebody repeat, because this is very important. If the line doesn't intersect, there's no solution. Exactly. So if the line does not intersect at any point, then there is no solution. For example, if the second, if the second, um, uh, um, what is it called? The second line, uh, you know, is parallel to maybe it is parallel like this to the first one, then there is no solution. If it is parallel to the second one, then there is no solution. But if it intersects at a point, then that point of intersection is the solution. So that's how to do it. Now, what we just did right now, we just sketched the graph. If you actually complete this table and uh, use the data you collected after completing the table to plot the graph, you will get a real solution. Any question, ladies and gentlemen? All right. So this is, this is the easiest it can get. There's no easier way of doing what we just did. There's no easier way. There's no simpler way. Plotting the graph is great. It, it just takes you a little while to plot the graph and it's gonna give you more accurate results. But what we just illustrated right now is you don't really, you can sketch the graph as well and still get a solution, all right? If this is a real, if, if we are illustrating a real application where we really need to get a result, you know, uh, then we must plot the graph. And wherever the points intersect is what we can say is our solution. So let's assume, make, let's just make an assumption that this inter, point of intersection here is coordinate of, um, you know, based on our graph, it looks like the solution is three comma, one you know just from our graph all right all right so let me give you one minute to think about it and see if you have a question and uh, if you do we will address it if you don't then i will change topic 